Hi there, it's Caitlin, Cross Stitch Kate, and I am here for floss tube number 11. Hi everyone, it's so good to see you. Um, let's see, today is September 23rd. It is officially the first day of fall, the best time of the year. I'm so happy it's fall um, here in the Northern Hemisphere. So the leaves are just starting to change and it's like getting cooler and crisper and I couldn't be more here for it. So, uh, yeah, I can't believe it's already the end of September. So the last time I came to you, um, I think it was like the third week in August. And yeah, it's been about four or five weeks since my last floss tube. And I don't have tons of progress, unfortunately. I have been like fully into school mode, getting back into the swing of things. And this year, for some reason, it has just taken me a long time to like figure out the transition and get back into my routine. So I'm still not fully there. Um, I do I do have things to show you, but I just don't have that much progress. So I did stitch, but my volume of stitches is just not what I was producing in the summer, which is fine. Right, there's ebbs and flows to uh, the stitchy seasons for sure. So yeah, I have lots of things to show and to talk about. I have a lot of haul today. Um, I thought I would show some of my fall patterns that I have in my stash um, and, and also show you some of my past fall finishes. Um, but before I get into the stitching, I just want to say a huge thank you to this amazing community. Um, last video, I posted my Amazon wish list for uh, my classroom for school. I am a school social worker um, in an elementary school. And some very lovely people sent me amazing tools for my classroom. I just, both me and my students could not be more grateful. We've been using everything that has been sent. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much to Trisha, uh, to Samantha, uh, Georgia and Erin for your generosity. That is just above and beyond. I didn't think anyone would, would participate in that. And they did. And they showed up for me and I just, I really, really appreciate it. That was, you know, the, um, school office staff, you know, every time they would call me, I, like, you have another package. I was, I was giddy. Um, and it's just really fun. And then, you know, some of my coworkers were like, who is sending this to you? And so I kind of had to reveal that I have a secret <laughs> cross stitch YouTube channel. So that was kind of a funny, a funny talking point um, with my coworkers. Anyway, thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so kind. I don't expect anything less from this community. It's just been nothing but positivity since the moment I started. So thank you, thank you. Um, what else have I been up to? I really haven't been up to anything except for working and just getting back into my groove, my school groove. So um, in October, I have some fun things coming up. I've got a family wedding um, in Milwaukee that I'm gonna be attending. And then my mom and my sister take an annual um, trip for my fall break. So we're gonna be doing that. I'll talk more about that later. In fact, maybe I'll film a floss tube from my my fall trip destination. That would be fun. We'll see, we'll see if I'm that organized. I might just be completely in need of a break by that point, but we will see. Okay. I would love to show you some of my past fall finishes. Um, I don't have tons of fall things. I have a lot on my whip pile, but not a lot of finishes. Um, so yeah, let me just show you a few things. Uh, the first one is called, what is it called? I think it's called Autumn Montage. And I believe that quite a few people are actually working on either this pattern. This pattern was released by Jam Lin, and it was also released by Pain Free Crafts, I believe, and they're kind of different. Um, they're like the same picture, but one is more intricate, um, and one comes in a kit. So I did the kit, and this was actually my first cross-stitch uh, project ever. Um, when I got back into it in 2020. So when I picked the hobby back up, I had done it as a kid and then I picked it back up in 2020 when I needed a hobby, when we were all kind of stuck at home. 
Um, and I ordered this Janlin kit off of Amazon. And here it is. So actually, here it is. <laughs> so I did the bottom portion of the kit. This um pattern is actually there's like another third of it there's like another row um that would kind of start right up here here i'll put a picture this is what the full pattern looks like and i started at the bottom um and this was advertised as a weekend project <laughs> and this took me months and months but it's actually it's very intricate and pretty there's tons of back stitching, um, and it's on 14 count oatmeal Ada, but I really do think it's pretty. Um, and so once I finished all of these sections and I was looking at the pattern and it was, you know, I was just over halfway done. I just couldn't bring myself to finish. <laughs> I just, I just didn't want to. So I took, I just found an autumn pattern and I followed the chart obviously and I just chose colors that were in the bottom portion and just backstitched autumn. Um, so yeah, this has been finished since 2020. I think in August of 2020 I finished this and it's been sitting in a box for three years. So this would be a really cute pillow. It just would. So I eventually need to maybe like with some flannel on the back, like that'd be fun. Um, but yeah, that is Autumn Montage slash Autumn. Um, my second fully Autumn finish is a beauty. Might be one of my favorite fall finishes. Um, this is Quaker Pumpkin from Hello from Liz Matthews. And I love this piece so much. So I stitched this on a piece of Old West Lugana in a 32 count from Color and Cotton. It was one of the fabric of the month when I was getting Color and Cotton fabric. Um, yeah, it is gorgeous. I love the color. Very subtle modeling on here. And then I used the called for weeks threads. And I just think it looks gorgeous. I had a lot of fun doing all of these Quaker motifs. And you might notice that I did change the wording on the bottom to pumpkin patch. I think it says All Hallows Eve, if I'm not mistaken, in the original pattern. But I just wanted this to be able to stay up um, like all fall long, all autumn, like up until Thanksgiving. And so I thought pumpkin patch was cute. And so the way I if there were letters um, already charted from this pattern, I use those obviously. And then um, I have the engravers chart, which has a very similar font to what is charted on here. So I just kind of made it up and messed around with the spacing. Um, I think I did this all on like graph paper. I didn't even like, yeah, I didn't do it on like a computer program. so. I don't have the, like my chart, if anyone would wanna do this wording, um, it's just kind of a figure it out <laughs> for yourself type situation. But the engravers chart really does help. Um, so I would, I would recommend that if this lettering speaks to you, or if you wanna just, if you're inspired to change it to something different. I know that Megan from Georgia Girl Stitching has a conversion. Um, I think it says Autumn Blessings, maybe? And it's really pretty. But yeah, and then, you know, Pumpkin Patch is shorter, obviously, than All Hallows Eve. So then I just added um, two of the stars from the top. And I think it looks great. So there is Pumpkin Patch or Quaker Pumpkin. And then the last seasonal finish, I showed last time, but I just thought I'd show it again. This is Bump in the Night from, um, oh my gosh, what is this? I'm <laughs> sorry. Prairie Schooler. Oh my gosh. Bump in the Night. It's so cute. And this, I fully finished this last month 
and it's been sitting on my mantle and I love looking at it. So only two colors. I changed out one of the, you can do these obviously individually and then Prairie Schooler gives you two additional um, little stitch cards. So I, I think I switched out the, um, I added the skeleton, but so cute. So yeah, those are my fall, my fall finishes, um, past finishes. So I would really love to get Quaker Pumpkin framed up, but I don't know if that's realistic. It's already end of September. Um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, let's get into what I have been working on this month. So first I'll just go ahead and show you my book of days. Um, so my last floss tube, I filmed, um, let's see, August 19th. And so that was my last floss tube and then school started on this day. And you can see I did not stitch. I stitched the Sunday before and then nothing. <laughs> and then just a little bit of stitching. And then my, my September is also pretty sad. So, but I mean, look at these stickers. I love them so much. These are from Paper Minty Studio. I mentioned them last time. And the stickers are on point for the fall. Um, but look at my my lack of... <laughs> I had one good week. I had one good week in September. The week of the 10th, I was just feeling really inspired. The rest of the weeks, not so much. So hopefully October will be more fruitful in the stitching department. But anyway, love my book of days. I see that um, Needlework Press is um, getting ready to choose a cover for the 2024 edition. I saw that on the Instagram, so I'll for sure be picking one up. Um, so yeah, check out Needlepoint Press if you would like one for next year. Um, so I had one finish, well, a finish for now, I guess you would say. Um, and this is my Plum Street sample, Plum Street sampler, um, salt shakers, uh, the salt box. And I will just go ahead and show you, um, this is, oh, sorry, this is a sal that I am doing with Jess from Sweetwater Stitcher and Laura in the New Hampshire Stitcher. Um, it is called Seasonal Solstice Sal, that's our hashtag. And we started it in the spring, on the spring equinox. And then, um, so there's obviously four seasons and I have spring and summer completed. So here are my cute little, my cute little salt box houses. Um, and so I have said before, these are actually both technically the spring ones. Each pattern comes with two, sorry, each pattern comes with two um, houses. And the actual um, charted ones for the summer just were not speaking to me. And I only wanted to do one from each season. I'm just gonna make this, um, I'm just gonna put four houses on mine. I believe that Jessica and Lauren are both doing all eight of them, but I'm just gonna do four. Um, but I loved the other spring and I thought it looked really summery. It's got like bees and those bright colors. So for me, this is my summer black. <laughs> so I've got spring and summer and then I will be starting fall. I don't know that I'm gonna start it today, but I'll start it sometime this month. Sorry for the crinkles. I'm just gonna take it out of the <clears throat> out of the plastic. So this is the autumn salt boxes from the Salt Shakers um, set from Plum Street. And I am going to do that orange house. And it's got like a moon and sunflowers. So that is going to be my fall salt box, and I will just put it right under the summer so that it will kind of go spring, summer, fall, winter, and kind of like a circular, I mean, it'll be a square obviously, but yeah. And then I can just frame it in a nice little square frame. I think it'll be really cute. So I'm happy with that. Spring and summer check, bring on the fall. I apologize, I'm doing this on a piece of 36 count Bramble from Picture This Plus, one of my all time favorite fabrics. I think Bramble is just gorgeous. 
And I'm using the called for colors. <clears throat> and it's a lot. It's a mix of weeks, um, classic color works, and DMC. So I haven't put these on floss drops yet, but I've got my palette. So that was my finish for now. And in the month of September, even though I didn't work on very, or I, I didn't work for very long on anything, I did manage to start three things because I have a problem and I can't stop starting things. Um, so I'm gonna show you my project for back to school, which no doubt you have all heard of. It kind of blew up. Um, that is the brainchild of my friend Lauren, the New Hampshire Stitcher. And my choice for back to school, which stands for big ass project. And the only parameters are you choose something big that you want to start. Um, and then kit it all up with the fancy shiny new things. And it's kind of like going back to school for those of you that don't have to go back to school. I actually had to go back to school. It was kind of a bummer. Anyway, this was not a bummer. My choice is Elizabeth Weston. And it is so beautiful from Hands Across the Sea. It's a reproduction sampler. Sorry if you can hear Birdie's bone in the back. Speaking of Birdie, people have been asking about Birdie. She's doing great. She's adjusting to the back to school schedule as well. Um, I took a little video of her this morning just so you can see how cute she is. She's super shaggy. She's getting a haircut tomorrow, but she looks adorable. Here she is. Hey bird. The people just wanted to see you and say hey. Um, so how are you doing today? Are you going to get a haircut tomorrow? Your mohawk is going to go away? Yeah, your little mohawk. Yeah. You're gonna look so cute. You already are cute. Oh my goodness. Hi. Birdie, check. Let's get back to Elizabeth Weston. Um, so I had a time choosing a fabric for this. It's really hard because there's actually a lot of white and cream in this pattern. And so kind of any of the typical sampler fabrics, you know, you're like light grays or super taupey beiges or bright whites, they wouldn't have shown the whites and the creams. And so I was really trying to find something close to the cover. Um, and they don't actually have what, what fabric they used for this specific sampler. It's really interesting. Um, they said that they use a 36 count, but they don't give you, they just say that the color is close to a DMC shade 422. And so I pulled the DMC and it was much more brown. Like this looks really pink to me actually, like the actual fabric. I don't know if you can see that, um, like a cool toned pink. And so I, I don't know. And this needs a fat half because it's huge. It is four, what is the stitch count? 433 by 449. It is huge. So you need a fat half. And I only have, I think I have a fat half in like vintage country mocha and I wasn't going to use that for this. Um, and so I bought two different cuts and one, just the whites were not going to show up. And then I decided to go with, um, I have another project on this, but this is Truffle from Picture This Plus. It's showing a little bit brown right now, but it is actually super pink. Um, I guess you can kind of see the pink shades, but it's more pink in person. And so I decided to go with this. And I'm actually, I think it's a really good match. The inside of the chart has a bigger photo of the thinnest finished um, sampler. And I think that it looks very similar to what I have. Um, like, look at that. Mine again, it's showing up more brown, but it is more pink in person. But just even the modeling, it looks great. So I'm happy with my choice. Um, so yeah, this is, this is 36 or 40. It might be 40 counts. 
to try to make this a teeny tiny bit smaller just because it is such a big piece. Um, I look, yes, it's 40 count picture this plus truffle. So I have the saddest start of all time. <laughs> I know it is sampler September, but I'm pretty sure that my September is just called sad start September because all three of my new starts have just pitiful starts. Um, I did get the Vicky Clayton silks, um, for this project and I'm so excited that I did that because they are luscious. I love them so much. I have three other projects that I'm using these silks for and every time I pull one out, it is a joy to stitch on. <laughs> and I put two lengths of thread into this project. I spent one day on it. It's just, it's barely worth showing. <laughs> I started in the middle, the top middle, because I think it's gonna be kind of close with this uh, margin. So I just really wanted to ensure that I have equal, equal amounts of fabric on both sides. So I just chose the midpoint on the top border and I just put in a length of brown. It like, could I be more boring? My gosh. Um, so it's a start nonetheless. <laughs> I don't really know when I'm going to dedicate some significant time to this project, but it feels great to have it started. Um, this is going to be several years in the making for me. It's just huge. It's so pretty though. So I'm excited to have it, but I have a sad start. So that is Elizabeth Weston, 1830. All right, my next sad start for Sad Start September um, is the project that I am going to be doing for my new baby nephew. Um, and it, here's a picture of the chart that I that I chose. It is Moon Bell Pull from Tiny Modernist. And it's really, really cute. Um, I am doing this on a 16 count black Ada and I haven't stitched on Ada since my autumn project. So that was my first project back in 2020 and I immediately switched to linen or Lugana and um, I'm back to I'm back to Ada. And so here's my sad start. It's not as sad as the last one, I guess. But here is the length of the project. It's gonna be so tiny. I didn't expect it to be so narrow, but I love it. Um, and it's just on a piece of, is it called chalkboard? It's blackboard, Ada. And 16 counts, I'm doing it two threads over one Ada square, obviously. And so I've got the first crescent finished. Um, this just uses four colors of DMC, two grays, a white and a black. And I think it's gonna be awesome. And so my plan for this is to put my nephew's first and middle name in the full moon um, and then his birth date on the next moon up and his weight, his birth weight on the first moon down. So this will be so cute. And then the pine trees are gonna look awesome. I love how the black on black is showing up. And this is fun to work on. It's fun to work on Ada. I forget like how much faster it goes for me, even with it being on black. You know, if you put it, especially if you put a white towel um, kind of on your lap as you're stitching and stitch in the daytime. Those are my two tips for stitching on black. Um, I think it's really helpful. So I wish I would have chosen a black um, linen, but I just knew that black linen is just much harder for me to see and I don't have tons of like daylight hours to be stitching that. So I think the Ada is gonna look great. I'm excited. So that is the moon bell pull that I need to really get cracking on. And then my third uh, new start uh, is a cell that I'm doing with two lovely floss tubers. Uh, Bridget, the museum stitcher, and Lindsay from Cat Fur and Cross Stitch. Go check out their channels. They both have lovely things to show. Um, but I asked them if they wanted to start the pink sparrow sampler because I had seen both of them um, either have this kitted or it was like part of their haul in recent months. 
and I've had this project in my stash for a while and it's so pretty. This is from, um, it's from Brenda Gervais, I believe, isn't it? Who is this from? Yeah, with the needle and thread, Brenda Gervais. Um, it's an antique sampler, a reproduction. So, so pretty. Um, this is one that I also struggled with, with the colors. I, I just was not prepared to start this. I was like, it was my idea to do this sale. And then like Bridget and Lindsay jumped on and they were talking about their fabric and their flosses. And we started this on September 9th <laughs> and September 9th came and I was like, oh, I never did this up. Um, I never actually prepared to start this with you guys. So I just did my own conversion and it took forever because I am not great at pulling colors and matching colors. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Here's my palette. It's pretty bright. Um, I would say, I guess it doesn't look super bright on camera, but there's a lot of like, it's kind of like a rainbow. I've got lots of good colors in here. And it's truly a hodgepodge of um, threads. So I've got Gentle Arts, I've got Color and Cotton, I've got car Cottage Garden threads, I've got Forbidden Fiber Co, and I've got DMC. And I am Classic Color Works and a Weeks. I've got like seven different dyers <laughs> in my in my conversion. So I'm still not convinced on the greens. The greens are kind of eking me out a little bit. I might have to change some. I don't know if they go together, especially this bright one. Oof, I don't know. Um, and I can't really even tell because I have such a sad start. <laughs> Third sad start for sad, sad start September. Um, I am doing this on 40 counts um, Elberium from Trixie, no, I'm sorry, Cedar River Linen, who is Trixie Tricycle on Floss Tube. And I just have a little corner done so, actually it goes this way. <laughs> Ooh, and I'm noticing, just as I'm holding this into the camera, you can barely see this peach color. Hmm. I might need to rethink that. Like, you cannot really even see it. Hmm, <laughs> hmm, Okay. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I might have to just buy the cold war threads and start over. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. Um, based on this and based on what I've shown you. Do these look like they go? I don't know. The sampler is really, um, I mean, it's soft, but it is, like there are bright colors in here. But they're more pastel. I don't know. I have one of the called for colors. I had one in my stash and that's pecan by, um, is it by Weeks? Yeah, it's my only Weeks pecan. Kind of the color of my hair. Anyway, that's my third start. All right, and then I had three whiffs that I worked on. Um, didn't get tons done, but I got some some progress. Um, so my first whip that I worked on is Hannah Ann Wallace, which is a really pretty um, reproduction sampler does note that it is with adaptations, but um, it's from With a Needle and Thread again, Brenda Gervais. I realize I think I have like four Brenda Gervais whips on the go right now, which is fun. They're just so beautiful. You can't help it. Um, but yeah, this is really beautiful. Here's a picture of the antique sampler. And I am also using Vicki Clayton silks with this. So I have these in this cute little button box. And I am stitching this. Um, what am I stitching this on? It's color and cotton, um, white tee. And here's a picture of where I was when I um, when I pulled this out. I think I worked on this back in like February or something, and pulled it out again. And I got some good progress. I got the alphabet done. I got that really beautiful berry bowl completed. And these silks, I'm telling you. 
they make such a difference. They're so shiny, which I don't know if that's coming across right now. But when I look at this in person, it is, it is truly stunning. And I just love, it's so much brighter than um, the photo. I mean, the photo is beautiful, but it's definitely more like kind of dusty colors. And I feel like my, my threads are brighter and just more vibrant and shiny. And I love them. So if you have not tried Victoria Clayton silks, which I think she's HDS silks on Instagram, um, please do yourself a favor and try them. She has like over, I feel she has like 300 conversions that are listed. So odds are you probably have something that she has already converted um, in your stash if you want to just take a look at that. Otherwise, um, I have asked her in the past to convert something for me and just send her my thread list and she has done it quickly. Um, so you can always email her and if you have something that she hasn't already converted with her silks and ask her if, she'll, if she has time to do it. So she's wonderful and really good customer service and um, you get your threads quickly. So highly recommended. And they're just beautiful to work with like butter. The next project that I worked on is a Tonio from Satsuma Street. Just such a cute little fall project. I showed this last time and I just did a little bit more this month. Um, this is on a piece of, I believe it's 32 count old, is it Old West? Or did I already use that for something else? Um, it's Harvest Moon, my bad. It's very similar to Old West, but it's a color in cotton. Um, just a pretty gold brown beige color. And so here is what I have done. Last time I showed you this, I had the full leaf and the outline completed as well as the pumpkin. And so this month I just finished the outline of the pumpkin with that variegated DMC floss. And then I started this block above, which is a mushroom. It's a bunch of mushrooms. So I've started this one, not far on it, but that is where I am. And I hope to get some more progress on this this season because I would love to have this done. And it's so fun to work on the colors in this, you know, Satsuma Street is amazing with their bright and bold colors. So they're so fun to work on. And this is a seasonal um, series. I have the summer one completed and I have spring and winter kitted up. So whenever I finish fall, I'll start the next season, I'm sure. And it's a really cool bee bag that I have. I do not know who made this. I got this years and years ago. So I'm sorry. I could probably look on Etsy. If I do figure it out, I'll put it here. And then my last whip is Things of Autumn. And I'm gonna put a picture right here, Things of Autumn from Posey Designs, who is Alicia Paulson on Instagram. Um, go check out Posey Designs. Uh, her website is so cute. She's got a lot of different types of um, like embroidery projects or just like other little crafty things that you can purchase. And then she does obviously have cross stitch too, so. This is a really cute one. I have two of these completed. This is also a seasonal series. I have spring and summer complete. And I'm gonna for sure finish this this season. I'm halfway done. Um, this is on a piece of 36 count, nope, 32 count ivory linen. Sorry for the hoop marks. But here is where I am. Oh, here's where I was before. I just had the boots, the candle, and a little bit of the pumpkin done. And now I have several more motifs. Isn't this so cute? And it goes quick. I mean, I did it all. So yeah, I had that bottom row done and then I did all of this with the leaves and the paper, uh, the backpack, the wheat. I did all of that just in an afternoon. The acorn is so cute. So I basically have the bottom half of this completed. So I just gotta move up and I will have my Things of Autumn complete. 
I'm using the called for DMC. These patterns do call for a lot of DMC. Like I won't sugarcoat it. It's probably like 40 something colors. I have these in floss away bags. Um, it's a lot of DMC. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't need very much of it. That's kind of the sometimes the frustrating part. It's like you'll need like two lengths of um, thread and then it's not called for again. So that's my only that's my only gripe about these, but the, the end product sure is beautiful. So if you've got DMC stash, then you're good to go. So those are my whips. Like I said, not tons of progress, but still I'm making moves and making moves. Let's talk a little bit about plans. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. Um, I'm gonna work on fall things because if you can't already tell, and I haven't already said it 5 billion times, I love fall. So I've got um, two focus projects. So you just saw a couple that I'm gonna continue to work on. I'm gonna continue to work on Satsuma Street Antonio. I'm gonna continue to work on Posey, to Des Posey Designs, Things of Autumn. Um, and then I'm also going to focus on my cinnamon stars from is it Plum Street. I think it's Plum Street. Uh, many, many people have finished that piece. I'm probably a little less than halfway through that one. And so I really want, I would love to finish that this season. I think it's totally doable. So cinnamon stars. And I also want to get one to two more blocks complete on Autumn at Hawkrun Hollow. So hopefully next video, you will see both of those projects and then we'll have some significant progress. Um, I've also been thinking about my birthday start this year. My birthday is November 9th. Um, so still have a little bit of time to think about what I wanna do. Um, but I have two things that I'm likely going to start. Um, the first, The first being um, Winter Wonderland from Plum, no, Blackbird, um, which is such a beautiful and fun chart. Unfortunately, this is out of print. I found this on eBay a couple of years ago. So put out your searches if you like the looks of this. Uh, I just love the geese. <laughs> I'm not like a big goose person. I don't know why I like it so much. There's like geese and deer and crows even like I don't like crows but I love this and the border is just really cool so I'm pretty sure um I believe was it Abby Bella Stitch um a few months ago I showed this in my whip parade and I think that her birthday is in late October so we were talking about maybe doing this for our birthdays so if you have a fall birthday and you want to start this and you have this in your stash please do and then <laughs> Last night, I was looking at patterns and Instagram, and I was looking at um, Pansy Patch Quilts and Stitchery um, on their Instagram. They just have really cute fall things. Um, I have some actually in my haul from them. And I was just looking back, and their um, Peppermint Lane series is precious and so so cute I've always wanted to do like a Christmas village and I think that this is the village that I'm going to do first so I think I'm going to start it for my birthday I bought everything last night so next time I'll have some more haul I bought all of the charts I believe there's nine little charts bought a great piece of fabric bought all the floss so got a kit coming to me so I think I'm going to start that as well for my birthday I'm really hoping that because dollhouse should potentially be done and that's been you know a monthly thing for me except for I'm two months behind now um I will catch up uh I think this one will be fun to do for the next year because there's nine blocks so I think that would be totally doable to get done within the next year following my birthday so yeah, I'm going to do that, I think. I think. If anyone wants to do Peppermint Lane, did I put a picture up? Here it is. Um, it's precious. It's adorable. I love the colors. And I would love for you to stitch it along with me if you want to get in on some birthday, uh, birthday stitching. Okay. I was going through my charts 
and I have so many cute fall charts that I just thought I would show you what I have in my stash really quickly. We'll get to haul, we'll wrap it up. I know that my videos sometimes can get lengthy, so I hope everyone is still with me. If you're not, it's totally okay. And you wouldn't have heard that message anyway. Anyway, this is um, Madame Chantilly. It is called Halloween Tree. How cute are those crows? Again, I don't love crows. I think they're kind of mean, but they're very Halloween-y. The next chart that I have that I really love is Pumpkin Spice Everything from um, The Scarlet House. How cute is that? It doesn't look like too much stitching. That has potential. I'm gonna start probably at least one new fall thing or Halloween thing in the next couple of months, probably two because I just can't help myself. Um, I also have this really cute little one, Three Jacks and Cats. This is from Stitches by Ethel. So adorable. I love the little pumpkins. And then I have another Madame Chantilly, which is the pumpkins collection. And so there's just three little smalls that you can do and you could really arrange this however you wanted. If you wanted to kind of create your own, you want to pick your favorite pumpkins and just create your own um, little small. It's adorable. It says pumpkin collection, Halloween is coming, and Halloween. And then I also have October 31st from Kathy Barrick, which is adorable. It's like a berry bowl but with pumpkins. This is, I think, relatively new can't remember when this came out. So cute. Um, I've got Autumn Garden by The Drawn Thread, which is so pretty, but it's really big. 289 by 63. I guess it's not, it's just long. That's pretty. This reminds me of Cinnamon Stars, actually. And, you know, I already have that on the go. Um, Just a couple more. I've got Penny Pumpkin from The Scarlet House. Joe always wanted to do. I think Carrie from Tiger Lily just finished this and it looked really cute. Or she's working on it. I can't remember if she finished it. It's so cute. Um, I've got Sweater Weather from Plum Street with little dachshunds wearing sweaters. Sorry for the glare. That one's really cute. Mm. And then the last one I have is the Salem Sisters Apothecary. And I know quite a few people are working on this one. I've had this in my stash for, I think, so, I think this came out last year, maybe at market. And this is cute, the little signage. So that has potential to get started. I don't think that would take that long. So those are just a few things I have in my stash that I'm considering. So anyway, all right. And now let me show you what I've gotten in the mail um, over the past month. My market stuff came in, so it might look like a lot, but I bought these earlier in the summer, like in, well, whenever market was in August. Um, so yeah, I just have, and then I bought some stuff from a stash unloading website. So anyway, the first two things I have are a couple of new fall project bags that I just love. This one is from my friend Colleen at Patchwork Crossing, my favorite bag maker. Oops, I'm trying to show you the little zipper pull. She always put it puts a piece of the fabric in the zipper pull that matches. And look at this. I love the blue pumpkins. So, so pretty. The inside is just white but it's a beautiful bag. It's beautifully made. So I would love to have a new fall project to put in that. And then we've got wild berry stitching that I also very much love. Um, go check out wild berry stitching on Instagram and over on Etsy. And I've got a really pretty little fall leaf charm. And then this just pretty, like I love the vines. It reminds me of like pumpkin flowers, um, like pumpkin vines, anyway. And then it just swirls on the back. And inside is gorgeous. It's like these pretty 
flowers that kind of match the colors on the front. So this is such a well-made bag. Wild berry stitching. <clears throat> Um, all right, let me show you what I picked up from Top Knot Stitcher. I, and these are my mark, the market releases that came out this August. I purchased from Top Knot Stitcher. Um, the first one is from Pansy Patchwork Quilts and Stitchery, and it is the Betsy's um, Halloween Basket. This is a series, a seasonal series, and now I believe that she's doing um, the holidays for the little baskets. Um, I have spring and summer, apologies, but look how cute the Halloween one is. The colors are really fun. Colors are great. I was just trying to see what fabric this is on. Murky, it's on murky. Isn't that cute? So that's Betsy's Halloween basket. And then I got the gorgeous, Autumn B from the Blue Flower. Oh, that is so beautiful. I forgot that I have this one. This might be a false start. I have some, this is on French Country Linen from Witchalt, but I, I know I have some like brighter purples and pinks um, that might be perfect for this in my stash. When I was a part of the color, um, the, I think it was like the Bright Club from Color and Cotton. I was, I did that for a few months and I got some, some pinks and some lavenders. So Autumn Bee might be a start. I'm not a big bee person, but that is adorable. Um, I got two skeins of English Ivy, um, Classic Color Works, and I cannot remember why. I know I bought these for a, a specific project, and I have no idea which one. So it'll just go in my stash, and I'm sure I'll figure it out at some point, or I'll rebuy it, because I'm not that organized. All right, I've got two more um, patterns that I've picked up from Top Knot, and this one is just gorgeous. I have not heard of this designer before. This is from Quaint Rose Needle Arts. And it is Josephine and Anne, 1867. And look how pretty that sampler is. I'm loving it. I love the very simple border and um, that there's kind of a lot of, I mean, it's a full sampler, but it's not like super crowded. And I like the symmetry of it. Sometimes that gets difficult to stitch, but um, I think it's really beautiful. And it's so sweet, Josephine and Anne. I'm curious to know like who they are. Who are Josephine and Anne? Are they sisters? Are they friends? Beautiful. That'll go in my stash. And then lastly, of course, I picked up Pumpkin House from Hello from Liz Matthews because I couldn't be left out. You know, everyone purchased this. I know quite a few people are starting this. Um, <clears throat> I think Carrie from Tiger Lily is doing a sal of this. I don't know that I will join in this year, but man, is it cute. The different fabrics, the dark blue and the white. So, so pretty. Um, so yeah, so that was my market haul. <clears throat> and then I have been watching, um, the Liz's. So uh, Liz from Hello from Liz Matthews, as well as Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. Um, they, I know that Liz from Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch has um, stockings that she has shown a lot on her, a lot on her channel. <clears throat> and um, then Liz from Hello from Liz Matthews um, wanted to start one of her own and they were talking about you know, just stitching stockings. And I've never stitch, stitched a, a stocking. I just have a Target stocking for me and Birdie. And so I think I want to stitch myself a stocking. And I was looking through, um, I can't remember, I will put right here what the specific stockings they are stitching. It's a specific um, designer. Cool, Cooler Designs maybe? Yeah, I think it's Cooler Designs. And they have really beautiful, intricate stockings. But 
they're just, nothing was speaking to me when I was looking through them. And I saw somebody post a finished stocking on Instagram and it was from Prairie Moon. And I had never heard of Prairie Moon. So I did some research and they are not currently designing strike that. I think that they have re-released some of their patterns that I think they were bigger um, like in the earlier 2000s and were releasing pattern like new patterns in the early 2000s and then I think they've re-released some but they have not re-released their stockings and they have um, like the first day of Christmas, second day of Christmas and their stocking patterns and I saw the finished, uh, I think I saw the fourth day of Christmas finished on Instagram so again did some research and then started trying to grab them because they're kind of hard to find, but I like the chase. <laughs> and so I ended up um, finding five of them. And I'm just like, this is part of my hobby where like, I know I'm not gonna stitch five stockings, but I need to collect things. <laughs> and so, I found two, no, I found one from Stitches from the Heart, which is a cross-stitch uh, shop, and then three from Shepherd's Bush, and one from a stash unloading website. So this all came together like within a week. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna just show you. And they're all deceptively similar, <laughs> which I didn't, because it was hard to find actual pictures of these online, to be honest. Um, I didn't do like tons of research, but anyway, here's what they look like. Here is the first day of Christmas. And so what the themes that I notice in these, um, obviously like the first day of Christmas, um, there's a partridge in a pear tree, right? So like they're going with the song, but then I'm noticing that there are, there's always a train in these patterns. There's many a times there are um, kids skating and then like the houses are similar, but some of them are just like placed differently in the subsequent stockings. So it's just kind of funny. So there's the first day of Christmas. There's the second day. So the two turtle doves. But again, it's like the same girl skating, the same train. <laughs> um, third day of Christmas, the three French hens. I love this one actually. I like the colors in this one a lot. This is, well, I have two favorites. This is one of my favorites because of the colors. So this is in contention to start. Um, the fourth day of Christmas. <clears throat> so with the four calling birds, sorry, I was singing the song in my head to figure out what these were, four calling birds. And then the fifth one is my other favorite, the five golden rings. And I love that there's like different little motifs in these rings. So this one's the most different than the others, obviously. The other one, the other four are very similar. So I think my decision is going to be between starting this one for myself and then starting this, the three French hens. So I'm, this won't get started probably, maybe this will be like my Christmas start. Um, I'm, I have no intention of stitching this for this Christmas, but that was really fun. That was a fun little little challenge to find those. I'm not sure if there are more. I did not ever see like six through 12. So if you know, um, if those are, you know, somewhere out there, then I have some more research to do and some more, uh, some more chasing. Um, the person who sent it um, the fourth day of Christmas to me via stash and loading also sent me a really sweet, she sent an extra. This is from um, Lizzie Kate, and it's called Think Winter. And she just threw that in, so that was kind. So thank you. Can't remember her name, <clears throat> but I'm, I'm almost done. Um, I also, when I was looking for the stocking, I saw this on a stash and loading Facebook group, and I had to have it. <clears throat> this is from Sarah, the designer Sarah. I want to say, I don't know what country this designer is from. I kind of want to say Italy. I think it's either Italy or France. No, it can't be France. 
I'm gonna have to do some research. Anyway, it's gorgeous. It's so cute. And there's a lot of like, this is a series. Um, <clears throat> and it's so cute. There's a bunch of igloos and just like a little town. It's a very similar style actually to the Prairie Moons. So that's fun. That's fun to have in stash. Those stash unloading websites, they have some gems. Um, and then I think I got these from 123 Stitch. I think I was buying fabric and I had to throw in a little one. So I got the Cuckoo Bird Sampler from Heart and Hands. This one is so cute. This is kind of fallish. I might start that. And then I got from Little House Needleworks Coco Cafe because I love the gingerbread men. And I don't have a lot of smalls, so I think I need to throw that in. Um, and I think I told you this last time, but um, I did cancel my fabric and floss clubs because I just, I have so much and I don't need any more. And it's sad because I love getting them in the mail. But anyway, I got my last fox and rabbit fabric and <laughs> um from Garon Toten Bags and or I'm sorry Garon Stitchery and this is what I got <laughs> it's very purple so this is called um Supernatural so it's 40 count Supernatural Linen from Fox and Rabbit this has potential so I have no idea I, I got this and I was like what am I gonna do with this because this is not my color but it could be really cute for a Halloween, and I'm wondering if that Salem Sisters Apothecary might look kind of fun on this. If I did it, you know, the black floss, it would just be really different. It'd be very seasonal. I, you know, would just keep it up for Halloween, but that might be cute. So, and then the very last piece of haul that I have is just something fun. Um, I. This is an uh, Instagram purchase and you know, Instagram is always watching you. So they know I'm a stitcher. And so I got an ad for these wooden needle cases. Here is the company that I bought this from. I cannot remember it off the top of my head, but it's like this laser cut wood in like a different tones. Um, I don't know if you can see like the texture, like it's not just painted, it's actually like cut and then there's a lighter wood underneath and then it's magnetized and they engraved my name in there and then there's magnets for your needles. And so it's like a, it's a magnetized needle case and you can like slide it because there's magnets right here and right here and they just snap together. So that was totally an impulse buy. It was not very expensive. I think it was $15. And I think I love the personalization of it and it's just really pretty. So another little notion that I have and that is my haul. Uh, let me tell you just a couple of floss tubers that I've been watching. Um, I saw that Morgan formerly of Honeybee Stitcher, is now, she has kind of rebranded her channel. Um, she just put out a video and I was watching it last night. And, you know, I always love watching Morgan. And her new um, handle and floss tube channel is called What's Morgan Stitching. So if you come across What's, What's Morgan Stitching, know that she's been in the floss tube game for a long time. Um, but yeah, she's great. Go support her. She works on a lot of Mirabilia's, um, Mermaids, Bella Filipinas. So, um, she's wonderful. Go check out Morgan. Um, I also, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know how I have been missing this person. Um, but I just came across Chris Crossstitch and he's fabulous. Um, I watched several of his videos. He recently came back to Floss Tube after a break and he's back at it. Apparently I'm, I'm a first time watcher. Um, and I, as I was watching him for the first time, I was like, this guy is, I can tell immediately he's so kind and just like a genuine, lovely person. And I, I immediately thought like, oh my gosh, he like reminds me of Mr. Rogers so heavily, like his mannerisms, the like the kind way that he speaks. 
And then he was like, he made a comment like, and I am the Mr. Rogers of Floss too. But I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So obviously I'm not the first person to think that. Um, Mr. Rogers, I have such a dear place in my heart. I love, you know, all the documentaries on Mr. Rogers, like the movie. Obviously I watched Mr. Rogers when I was a kid on PBS and he's just, oh, he was a wonderful, wonderful person. Anyway, Chris Cross-Stitch reminds me of him and he's just really great to have on while you're stitching and it just makes you feel nice and warm and safe. So Chris, thanks for your videos. I'm excited that I get to go back and watch all of your old ones because I'm a new viewer. So, and then also I want to give a shout out to Ro Rosanna, Rosanna, I can't remember how you pronounce it. Anyway, her channel is Nest of Petals. She's wonderful. She's a relatively new floss tuber. Um, she commented on my last video because she is also working on um, the, Holly, the Holly Berry Farm Halloween and Christmas patterns. I believe she's finished or very close to a finish on one of them. She's much farther on both of them than I am because I just started. But anyway, that was fun where I, I see that there's a lot of people working on those. But Nest of Petals is a great channel. Go check that one out as well. Thank you very much for tuning in. I know there's a lot of variety and choice um, of different people to watch here on FlossTube. So thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. If you are so inclined, please subscribe so you can get notifications about my future videos. And um, make sure to leave me a comment. Let me know what you were stitching on during this very long and windy road that we just took together. Um, thanks for last video. I had a lot of great comments and really helpful things. So, um, yeah, thank you. If you have a recommendation of somebody that you think I should be watching that I've never mentioned before, please leave that down below. I'm always looking for new floss tubers to support and to, um, be inspired by. So, all right, everyone take care. I will be back sometime in October. Happy fall. Enjoy all the fall things. If you are up here in the Northern hemisphere, and just enjoying this gorgeous time of year. Okay, take care everyone, bye.